Hey everybody, welcome back to News by Muse. This is a very special episode as we got Libe and Pilar from Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Uh, Libe plays uh, Casey. Pilar is one of the producers of the show. One thing that I wanted to do differently about this interview than we did in the last two was the fact of talking about the of re, Latino representation in the, in the show. Because uh, this show is definitely something that if I was a kid, even and now as a big kid, I mm-hmm. love the show, oh. but we've never seen like growing up when watching cartoons like this, our animation like this, we never saw ourselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, now we do. What is that feeling like to be able to see that now in animation, especially with Marvel? It is truly amazing. Um, right before this show, I produced Elena of Avalor, and that was my first taste of seeing our community reflected on screen. And to have my own little girls run around the house and say things like, I'm a Latina, and that means I can do anything, was so emotionally triggering for me. And to see my mom even cry hearing anybody say that out loud, never, you know, never mind her granddaughters, uh, that uh, when I stepped into the show, I knew that I wanted to be a part of something that was going to push that needle even further. And so for me, it is so fulfilling. It's so um, empowering and important to see this diverse group of characters and this little African-American girl and this Latina little girl empower one another, support one another, love one another in a way that you never see on screen. And like you say, in a representative and authentic way you never see on screen um, is truly something special, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really, I feel so lucky to get to voice Casey. I think that she's, I mean, she's she's Latina, she speaks Spanish. She's also like, she's also just like really smart and fun and like the, per, the sort of part of the engine behind like Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur and their like superhero brand. And um, I don't know, yeah, like I think for me, especially like growing up in the US, I you know, I, I learned Spanish, I spoke Spanish at home primarily. And um, then you start school and you sort of have a complicated relationship with it, you know, when you're trying to assimilate with the other kids. And, you know, and I think like, as I got older, I lost a little bit of my Spanish, which is really sad and was re and like, I rehabilitated it as I got older. And I'm like, I, if I had seen, if I had been a kid who had seen like a cool Latina who's speaking Spanish and is celebrated for it and is a powerhouse, like that would have meant so much to me. And I feel very lucky to get to voice that for like little girls who are going to be watching this around the world. Yeah. And I'm the opposite from you. Like I learned English. My grandma used to speak to me in Spanish all the time, but I remember growing up as a little kid saying and seeing and saying, why am I, I'm never going to need to speak Spanish. Like, mm-hmm. I need English. I need to know English. And now I see it now and I'm like, dude, I wish I was born in this generation. Because <laughs> then it, it would have been a lot different. Yeah. It would have been a different if, if experience for me. Absolutely. So that's one thing I love about this show is that young kids are going to see this and say, I'm, I could be a part of this. I that's could be cool. an animator. I could be producing this show. Yeah. That's I could be a superhero. Thing. I could be a writer. Yeah. That's yeah. our missions of the show. Exactly. And that's what's cool. It's seeing that diversity, seeing the changes that are coming about. And that's something that I love seeing. Now, yeah. working with Marvel to be able to bring this, because I mean, Moon Girl and the De- Devil Dinosaur has been in existence. Moon Girl came out 2015. I believe the comic book that's is right. when Moon Girl came out. You're seeing a different change now from what it was in the comic book to now, because both social media, especially with Casey or your character, is highly involved with social media. What was it like to uh, Libé to bring Casey into and to voice that character to be able to like give that that taste to her, especially since she's a social media type of person? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because Casey wasn't in the comic books. She was yeah. an original character that they came up with. And I, and I remember when I like got, I think it was like right before I went for the callback, I like went to the comic book store and I like bought a bunch of these, I like got like five <laughs> Moon Girl comics and I read all of them and I was like, where's Casey? And then I went to them and I was like, so when does Casey come in? And they were like, oh, she's not in the comic books. We're adding her and she's going to be part of the origin story. And I was like, this is so exciting. So I kind of got to start her from like, you know, I, I like got to create her from the beginning and um, I it's it's really fun and cool. And I think that, you know, social media is something like I, I'm not a big social media person, but it's so integrated into, you know, like into like the culture, especially for like young people, 
the young people uh for like gen z and stuff and i'm like and it is like a it is a superpower you know and she's like truly mastered it she's really like and i think that that is the like modern powerhouse pr person is the person who has this mastery over this like thing that controls you know not controls but like is such a big part of everyone's lives and um it's cool and exciting and like i hadn't really thought about like social media like that until i got to voice casey Mm -hmm. yeah and um I want to switch angles a little bit with Pilar now because you've been a driving force of getting more people Latinos in Hollywood. Yes. Uh, you've been working with Edward James Olmos uh, to do the to do this. Yes. What has it been like, and what have you seen so far? Uh, we're seeing change, and it's coming slowly. But yes. I think now, for me, especially for me, that we need to start reaching that younger generation who's going to be the next producers. What has been that journey for you like to be able to to see that and work with Edward? Well, first of all, what was amazing to me is that as a little girl growing up in Latin America and Europe, um, at the age of five, I knew I wanted to tell stories. I wanted to come to Hollywood and and um, yeah, be a part of this magic. And it wasn't until I got older and actually came to Hollywood that I started um, not believing in myself. And it took a while to gain that back. And it took, you know, kind of like in our show, the support of other um, amazing women, other Latinos to infuse that confidence back into myself. And so for me, what I've realized, especially working with the incredible Edward James Olmos uh, on the Latino Film Institute is that we have so much talent out there. We have so much passion, so many incredible stories to tell. The thing that holds us back is confidence in ourselves and the belief that we're wanted in this industry. So our main mission has been to go out to the community and express to them, yes, oh my gosh, we need your voice. We need your talents. And even in our own crew, we have so many Latinos and we are a majority uh, women and uh, the, for people from diverse communities and members of the LGBTQ plus community on our show. And what I've realized is it's not a sink or si- swim situation. So it's not about just handing people a job and seeing if they can do it. It's about creating bridges between experienced people and um, diverse, incredible talent so that they can feel supported and they can kind of cross that bridge and, and regain that confidence in themselves to do the role. And so like you say, To me, the main thing is reaching that generation, reaching that five-year-old little girl that I was when I completely believed in myself um, before the world told me otherwise, and to tell them uh, right from the start that they can do it, to give them the tools to do it. Um, What a lot of people don't realize because they go, oh, it's animation. Can't they just learn it online? There's so many websites. What they don't realize is so much of the Latin community does not have a laptop. They can't just go online. So it starts from giving them the tools so that they can um, you can fill that equity gap, you know, faster. But I am so excited that in this show, between the characters they'll see on screen and the group of incredible creatives behind the scenes, um, hopefully they will see it and they will believe it that they are wanted and that they can do these incredible roles. If we can do it for a Disney and Marvel show, they can absolutely do it as well. Yeah, I agree with you because, like, when I started out out of college, I remember doing internships and them telling me, like, you don't know anybody in this industry, you don't you're Latino. So you're going to have to go somewhere, work for free. Hopefully you can make your way back to LA or New York or something to, to get paid and what those struggles were. And that was like 1929 or well, like 1999. Shoot. I'm dating myself now. <laughs> so, so I left the industry and went to go work for the national hockey league where I was the first Latino working for the NHL. Mm, wow. So it's like, I see it and then I come back to this industry and you see like what things hadn't changed when I started Muse. And I was just kind of like, this needs to change. This needs to. And I, and it's great to see both of you doing what you, you are doing and showing this change, because I think uh, that we have a lot of great stories, like you said, and they need to be told. And Absolutely. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur is one of those where it's such a it's real life. That's that's the crazy thing. It's every diverse. There's so much diversity within the show. That's the way real life is. And those are the stories that need to be told. That's right. Yeah. And for me, for season two, now that it's been greenlit, uh, I'm going to be co-showrunner of the show. And uh, 20 years ago, when I used to tell people I wanted to run my own show, they used to laugh. And so now for me to be stepping into that role in a show that means so much to me um, is just incredible. And so that's why a huge goal of mine is to to create 
diverse leadership that uh, understands that and that can continue to elevate others the way we've gotten the opportunities to ourselves. Yeah, exactly. And Libe, uh, you've been doing so much great work. I see like from doing, you have so many shows that you've been so great on. To be a part and to see this growth and to see this change, what has it been like to be one of the, one of the, I, I guess you could say young <laughs> front runners who really pushed the envelope? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. It's, it's amazing. I, it's, I mean, it's funny, like, I, what I've been, something I've been saying is like, I, you know, when we have, we, you know, we started recording this, like when everything was locked down, we were sent equipment that was like, you know, we're doing this in our little closets that we've converted into our booths. And, um, you know, and I think that, you know, and you go into the studio and you talk to the, you know, you talk to everyone for a little bit and everyone there's just so much love that's gone by that's like gone into every aspect of this and so much care and like you know every recording session like the writers are like oh and we have this exciting thing coming up and like oh my god and look let's let me show you this piece of animation and like everyone is just it it's never felt like this big marvel disney show and so now that it's coming out it's kind of crazy to be like yeah this thing that was like made with so much care and love and like you know, and 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 all of these conversations that we've been having about diversity and like the stories that we're telling, like, is actually going to come out on like a big scale, and people are going to see it. And like, it's really, it feels really crazy that like, you know, I I think that it's it's felt like such a like a like an intimate labor of love that um is it's really exciting that that's going to be something that like that I it feels like the right way to have made this thing that is now going to come out on like this big scale and is hopefully going to like make a difference for people and and that people are going to just like have a great time watching too yeah exactly just recently I was talking to Jacob Vargas and he was giving praise to Disney for for the diversity aspect of things and seeing differently it's telling different stories and being able to take that risk yeah. to tell those stories and not be scared to say hey this is what it is like it, don't like it. It's great. We're putting it out there. And that's the, the cool thing. And uh, what are you feeling towards this whole streaming world as we're seeing a diverse streaming platform now and Disney Plus having a lot more Latinos in their shows? We're seeing others doing the same. What has that been like for you to see that? That the streaming, the streaming area is what's really spurring this new creative thought and these new creative aspects. Yeah, what's great is that, like you say, it's now opened up the opportunity for so many more voices and the fact that on streaming, they can really narrow in on who's watching what, you know, people can, you know, put comments in, you know, like, dislike, you know, so they have so much more information about what the audience is hungry for. And people want that diversity, they want that authenticity. And so that is helping create more opportunities for us to push things forward. And I do have to give a big shout out to Disney because you mentioned Disney Plus. Uh, we couldn't do this without a studio that was willing to take those risks, that was willing to put that extra money and time into a show like this. Because you know what I was telling you about creating those bridges, that doesn't just happen. That takes money, that takes extra time. So that has been myself and a lot of the diverse um, creatives on our show going to the studio and saying, okay, this is an initiative we need to create. Okay, this is a, a wall that's up in this union part of the process. It's been us pushing for it, but it's been the studio supporting that with, like I say, time and money. And once studios do that, um, the sky's the limit. So yeah. streaming is hopefully our path towards more of that. Yeah, exactly. And to circle everything back to Moon Girl. <laughs> <laughs> what can we expect this season? Are we, the one thing that we try to get out of people and now when this airs we should be about two episodes three episodes in mm -hmm. is um are we gonna see casey interacting with some of the marvel superheroes in this program are we gonna see more the spider-mans the uh, possibly fantastic four or anything coming up in the program well <laughs> well, so because we're not officially part of the MCU, we consider ourselves companion to the mm -hmm. MCU. We're kind of our own multiverse. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are some crossovers. Um, and I can tell you, Casey is going to fight with, play with, you know, become friends with many super fun Marvel superheroes and supervillains. Uh, some guest stars from the MCU and and some otherwise, but um, 
yeah, you are in for a roller coaster ride of emotion, heart, action, um, inclusive, beautiful messages. And, um, and yeah, Levi, I don't know what you want, would like yeah. to add to that, but you have no, so you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I think, and I think truly like it's something that you've it, really, truly different animation than you've seen, like, I think, in so much heart and, um, yeah, and I think a show that tackles so many big, important issues, but never feels like it's preaching at anything because it's all like baked into these really fun stories. And yeah. 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 Part, so can I'm excited about is, is telling the story about these two little diverse girls in such a sophisticated way. Um, something you don't expect out of a, a show about two little girls. Um, you don't usually see a show about two little girls with, you know, huge Marvel superheroes, villains, um, incredible music by legendary executive music producer Rafael Sadiq, um, artistry that is next level comic book come to life type of style. Um, it's just so sophisticated and, and, um, uh, multifaceted in so many ways. So very excited about that. So Libe, what you're trying to say is that Casey's going to be taking over the social media for uh, some of these Marvel superheroes. That is what <laughs> you're, you're trying to, yeah, are, are you kind of li letting that leak out? Right? She's, kind of, she's actually currently running all of the superheroes, <laughs> uh, all of the Marvel, <laughs> Marvel superheroes social media accounts. <laughs> Don't get me in trouble. Girl has her heart. Blue girl comes first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing I do have to touch on is the music. The music is so good. Like, oh my Negro God. Magic, when I first heard it, I was just like, wait, this is not like your normal kid show mu music. This is, I was already bumping to it when I got the preview, the, the screeners. And I was just like, and it's so good. I think that's what's going to pull in the adults is yeah. really the music and to show that watching with their kids. I want to know what you guys think, if that's going to be the pulling factor for a lot of adults to be able to sit there with their kids and see it because of that familiarity with Raphael Sadiq and Tony, Tony, Tony. And yeah. And, and actually not only adults, but kids too. I think what people don't realize is that kids have such a sophisticated taste in music nowadays. Now with, you know, so much music at their fingertips, kids are listening to everything and anything. And so from the beginning, when we started the show, we wanted to have every type of music in there, not just hip hop, you know, or stereotypical music, but music that a 13 year old little girl would love listening to, you know, which there's so many different styles. And Rafael Sadiq is so amazing, so talented. We've thrown so many different styles at him. And every time he comes back with this um, incredible piece of music that becomes um, a character on its own in every episode. And uh, one thing we've done that I'm so excited about is every episode has its own uh, music video style sequence that we lovingly call our mixtape moments. And that is like a comic book come to life um, musical number that encompasses vibrant um, colors and palettes, but also a beautiful piece of music that mostly Rafael Sadiq uh, will have done. And every time we've always talked about, okay, we're not going to dumb it down. We're not going to make it for kids. We're going to make it music that we ourselves love and would love to listen to over and over. And he absolutely achieved that in spades. I, I cannot wait for the soundtrack to come out because um, I will be playing it 24 seven. That's for sure. Oh, trust me. I've been putting bumping it in the car. Yeah. Love, so love good. the show. I cannot wait. Oh my God. We've got some for yeah, I can't wait till Friday it's for everybody to see it. Uh, thank you so much for stopping with us and being a part of Muse TV and what we've done. Thank you so much. And so good much luck. continue the great work. Thank you. We appreciate it so much. We're no excited. Problem. Thank you.